since several people have asked about how do you build a flat turn, we're going to look at that in this tutorial. And specifically, we'll look at how to transition between a drop into the flat turn and then how to transition out of it again. So I've already built the element in Newton 2. And I'm not going to go over how I built the lift hill. Uh, you can look at the very first tutorial in this series to, to learn how to do that. But if you're wanting to follow along, let me tell you what the, the parameters are, the variables are at the beginning of uh, this section, which is where we start the transition into the flat turn. So the speed at the beginning of this is 18.31 meters per second. The pitch is minus 65 degrees. Uh, I didn't change any of the global values. They're all their default value. Orientation is Euler, which is again the default. The height at this point on the track is 32.275 meters above the ground. That's the Y value. So you can put those values, uh, you can set those as the initial conditions, uh, initial con values here, or parameters here, and that will get you to this point of the track, and you can follow along from this point forward. So the, so the transition into the flat turn will be uh, created with a multi-zone force, and specifically it will be one roll zone and one lateral zone that span two normal subzones. And one of the things that we need to decide before we embark is what will the roll, roll value be throughout the, the turn. And the reason that we need to know that is this sets the norm, what the normal force has to be throughout the turn. So in this case I've chosen 60 degrees. So this is a 60 degree turn. And in order to determine what normal force we need to maintain a flat spin or flat turn. We bring up the conversion panel, we type in 60 degrees here, and then what we do is we look at the cosine of this angle. So the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and the g-force that we need to maintain a flat spin is 1 divided by the cosine of the roll angle. So in this case 1 divided by 1 half is 2, so we need a 2g normal force at the end of this section to maintain the flat turn. So that's what we'll do. Well, the first, first what we'll do is we'll, we'll pull up out of this drop. So the first normal subzone, I've increased the normal force by three Gs. So at the end of this subsection or subzone, the normal force is 3.421 Gs. And then for the second half approximately of this section, Again, we need to end up at the end of this section at a normal force of 2 Gs. So I subtracted 1.421 Gs to achieve that. And then the roll transition is 60 degrees. So again, at the end of this section, we have a roll of 60 degrees and a pitch, excuse me, a, a normal force of 2 Gs. Now, another, another thing that we have to keep in mind is at the end of the section, the pitch angle has to be zero degrees. And again, that, if it's not zero degrees, then the turn won't be flat. It'll either go up or down depending on if the pitch is positive or negative. So that's the other part of the equation that we need to make sure is exactly right. And that's achieved by adjusting uh, the times of these two normal subsections. So you can adjust the time back and forth, and you can dynamically look at the pitch to see if it's too high or too low, and adjust uh, these two subsections as necessary. So in this particular case, I've determined this beforehand uh, just by trial and error. Uh, the first zone, normal subzone, has a length of, or a temporal length of 1.36 seconds. And the second one has a length of 1.57 seconds. It's actually 1.566 seconds. And by the way, a little trick that you may not know about, in order to uh, adjust uh, really any sort of value more finely than what you can normally achieve, if you hold down the shift key while you press the up and down arrow, it uh, adjusts the value in smaller increments. And this allows you to fine-tune, in this particular case, the pitch. 
So we can see as we move up or down, the pitch changes accordingly. So 1.566 seconds achieves uh, a zero pitch. Then the next section, I switched back to a single zone force. And there's no transition here. It's just zero transitions for roll, normal, and lateral. And I set the time to 6.44 seconds. So this brings us almost all the way around. So you, you can see there that it's uh, essentially a, a perfectly flat. Now to transition out of the, the spin is a little bit tricky. So of course, the roll value is easy. We want to go from 60 to 0. So the, nor the roll transition is minus 60 degrees. The normal force is a little bit more tricky. We want to end with a normal force of approximately 1g, which corresponds to um, level motion, straight motion. And again, we want the pitch to be 0 degrees at the end of the section. So a zero degree pitch and a 1g normal force corresponds to straight and level motion. Now if I if you'll notice here I have a time warp transition but if we start off with just the quintic which is what the default transition is you'll see that the pitch here is a little bit too high so again, we want the pitch to be zero at the end of the section so that uh, the exit will be level. But with a quintic transition, what, what's really going on is that the, the transition itself isn't getting to one fast enough, one G fast enough. And so on average, the, the normal force is a little bit too much uh, for this section. Uh, so the, the track tends to pull up a little bit and the, the pitch is, is greater than zero. So in order to mitigate this effect, what we need to do is decrease uh, the normal force a little bit more quickly than the default quintic transition. So I'm going to switch to a time warping transition. And again, what we want to do is bring the transition to 1G faster than the basic quintic transition, which is corresponds to the basic value here. And I switched to a hybrid transition. And the hybrid transition is a special transition that, that allows us to go from a bump transition, actually we can go past a bump transition, to a basic quintic transition, or anything in between. And I, I want to, to adjust it so that it's, for the most part, a basic transition. But again, I want to bring the, the transition to 1G a little bit more quickly. So here I've set the blending to minus 38.5. And again, initially the center is 0. And we see that we're not quite at, at uh, a 0 degrees pitch here. So if we decrease this again to bring the, the transition to 1G a little bit earlier, and that will give us the zero degree pitch at the end. So that's how you create a, a flat turn. The main point to keep in mind is again, the normal force has to be one over the cosine of the roll angle. And once you set that, then creating the, the flat turn itself is not too difficult.